Welcome to For Formula One Sake, the F1 podcast that's an eight. Optimistic. No, I mean, I don't mean how attractive we are. I mean that we are physically in the shape of an eight. Welcome to For Formula One Sake, the F1 podcast that ruined its Sunday. Why? Why did we ruin our Sunday? Didn't ruin my Sunday. I, I had to Sunday. get up at seven to watch a race that that's I then first... early. That's, 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 that's six. That's a lion. Yeah. Yeah. Six I was up to you. I mean, they've started at six. I was up at half five. I'm either an hour behind or an hour ahead of you. I can't remember how it works. Mm. No, I'm ahead of you because it's currently, as we record this, it's nearly 10 o'clock. I can see the eclipse. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. We can't afford to keep doing this. Is that the end of the podcast then? Spare mm. us a tenner, Gov. That's what James Vowell says now. He says, spare us a tenner. Oh, I don't want to pay for the car to go back to the factory because my dumbass drivers don't know how to drive a car. <laughs> where, where, where's he from? <laughs> I don't know. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the humiliating career end of F1 podcasts. That's the most accurate intro we've ever done. Mm. I'd say that's pretty accurate. I feel like my career's ended since I yeah. started here. We've all I... killed it by doing this. Mm. Define humiliating. <laughs> Crashing into a wall? Oh, Ricardo. Sorry, I thought you were talking about that thing that I did. Okay, great. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peart, and tonight, from a cherry-blossomed courtyard replete with samurai and Pokemon, we'll be talking about the Japanese Grand Prix. After the start of what we thought would be Red Bull's slow decline in Australia, they scored an easy 1-2, which overshadowed what was, on paper at least, a marginally interesting race. Or was it? Don't decide for yourself. We'll tell you. So sit down, shut up, and buy a T-shirt. We'll talk about everything you need to know and cover all your favourite drivers and teams, except for Salva. That's all to come. Joining me is a man who might be on the way out. It's Phil Tromans. Oh, no, what? Oh, no, what's well, <clears throat> I, might be, I might be slightly over-exaggerating. So remember a couple of weeks ago I talked about my... Uh, newfound venture into the world of rollerblading again. Oh yeah. Decided to uh, relive my youth and go to skate parks. Went back to the skate park. Oh yeah. Um, about three minutes in, mm. bang my leg. Did you Ricardo it? <laughs> I did. It was somewhat of a Ricardo, although it was three minutes in as opposed to about thirty seconds. So I actually did better than him. But um, didn't think too much of it. And then at the end, when I took my sort of knee pads off, I looked at my leg, and it was about three times the size that it was to start with. Oh, no. And I thought, oh, no. Oh, does that mean you're really tall on one leg? That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had just got longer. Really weird. No, um, 10 days later, I still have basically an, an egg grafted to my kneecap. Egg. Uh, my entire leg has gone... <laughs> My entire leg has gone uh, yellow and purple. My oh, heel no. has gone purple. Didn't even hit my heel. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm probably going to lose my leg. So that's you've good. Gotta be, you've oh, got to be careful, dear. though, because if Rishi Sudak calls an election, th- those are the UKIP colours. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I won't be doing is standing. Hey! Sounds like gangrene. I, well, it might be gangrene or yeah. gout. I mean, I've been eating a lot of chocolate since have Easter. You, you don't, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure you don't get gout from rollerblading. But trench have, foot. Have you been to the doctors? Are they they still exist? Over no, there? but I, I've, my sister in law's a doctor, and I sent her a WhatsApp, and she said it's probably fine. Well, probably you said you sent her a fine. Did you send her a picture, or did you yeah, just say hi? No, I, went, sent, yeah, I, I sent her a picture. I was like, look at this, and she, you know, she works in accident and emergency. She sees ways worse, way worse. She's just like, yeah, it's fine. Maybe I'll yeah. send her a picture. Don't do that. What's this? <laughs> it's been bothering me for years. <laughs> I can't concentrate when it's like this. <laughs> I'm in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's back on the cocks. And beside him is a man who isn't in a film. It's Terry Saunders. That's okay. Lie. So this this needs a bit of backstory. So okay. long term listeners will know that I'm in a James Bond film. You're a film like star. Talk, I don't like to talk about it. Terry Saunders is just your stage name. Yeah. Your real I, name is Daniel Craig. I, I don't like to talk about how I was in a Bond film. I, I barely ever bring it up, I think. I don't you know, think I've ever heard you talk about it. What, the fact that I was in a Bond film? What I'm in is yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, it was in your podcast, wasn't it? Fucking Bond film. <laughs> well, I got axed. Of, um, <laughs> you know. And um, apparently they don't, you, can't, you can't act like Bond anymore. That's what I learned. <laughs> Political correctness gone mad. Oh, wokeism. <laughs> but um, I... So I went... Uh, what, 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 what am I saying? So... I was in a Bond film mm. because I was an extra in a. When I was depressed, I joined an extra agency. I did two jobs. One job was a James Bond film, and I'm in the background of a scene as a nerd when uh, Q's lab thing gets hacked. So that's me. You can see me in it, right? Oh, cool. Exciting story. You know, can confirm. Mm-hmm. It once got me a 
half a hand job. Great story. <laughs> Great. From Q? No, no, it was, it was myself. I, I, <laughs> I, I fought this thing on my hand. It wasn't about Bond at all. I was, what am I saying? I'm so tired. Just I'm produced sorry. a quantum of solace. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, this week, a new film has come out <laughs> called Scoop. I don't know if you've heard about this. It's about... The, oh, with... Uh, about the... the Prince Emily Andrew. Maitlis and yeah, Prince yeah. Andrew interview. I have. Know. Yes, yes. The sweaty uh, Pizza Hut story. No, Pizza Express. Yes. Yes. Mm. So, I worked for Newsnight around the time this interview, well, this interview was done. In fact, I think I, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I was in the office on the day they did the interview. Ooh. And then it occurred... Then a friend of mine asked me, oh, have you seen the film? Because it'd be good to see if the Newsnight office stuff is realistic. So I was like, oh, I'll watch it. So I kind of... You know, I, I watched... I skipped to all the boring bits with Prince Andrew. I just watched the bits at the office. And even though I am not depicted personally, mm. there are some people at the back of the shop that I think could be the graphics people because there's usually three of us on shift any, any given day. <laughs> so I, then I realised that... So even though I'm not in the film... Because I was working on the day that it happened. Yes. Technically, I am depicted in the film. Wow. On a technicality. Yeah. And I realised that that means I'm in Bond film as a geek in the background, mm -hmm. and I'm not in this film as a geek in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love yeah. this. It's a bit oh, of a so, head fuck, isn't it? It's so geeky. That's what yeah. it is. I want to find out who this actor is that played you. That would be or good. didn't. Or didn't because I think I think it yeah. might be three. Well, actors you know there was a film star called Terry Saunders. Yes, she was in The King and I. And yeah, I know, like a lot, a I know a lot lady. about. I know a lot about Terry Saunders. Mm -hmm. What do you know? I mean, I mean, do you want to talk Let's about Japanese Grand Prix or should we talk about Terry Saunders? Because I know she's dead now, but I also I also befriended a friend of hers who was a a gay man who lives in New York, and he gave me all of her archive of stuff, including Whoa, a letter. That's from, amazing. I've got like a copy of a letter from MGM when they're begging her to come back to wait, the film business. Wait, 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 sorry. I know. No, yeah, but this this sounds this a little bit like a scam Japanese story. Grumpy. You went to somebody whose friend had just died and then acquired a load of items from them because <laughs> you basically said, oh, yeah, like, me, we've got I'm the same name. Saunders. Can you and give me some I, money, please? I got him to give me 500 quid to do his driveway. <laughs> You're just doing You're scams on, on vulnerable people that are grieving. You bastard. Yep. <laughs> Ollie, what have you been up to? Are uh, you better? Are you still ill? No, yeah, I'm better, but my daughter has brought a new virus back. That sort yeah, of well, that's on a weekly basis. Because, yeah. yeah, But this one hasn't floored me quite so much. I've just got a bit of a cough. Yeah, um, that's just constant, yeah. I haven't done, I haven't done too much. I've done this, but I've done fuck all. <laughs> Stumbling over nothingness here. Like I, I was desperate for you to ask me the question just to feel included, but actually, I've done fuck all this week. Okay. Okay, we'll start as we always do with the news. In January, McLaren announced the arrival of a new technical director of car concept and performance. David Sanchez came straight from Ferrari, which perhaps should have been a warning sign because after just three months, he's gone. Why? According to McLaren team principal Andrea Moda, the roles, responsibilities and ambitions associated with David's position did not align with our original expectations. So what does that mean? It I mean, means he lived up to his nickname of Dirty Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that came into my head. For legal you know reasons, <laughs> we don't, there is no suspicion at all that he's yeah. done anything untoward, yes. other but, than perhaps being not as good at his job as everyone thought he was going to but be. But can I just say, I don't know what Dirty Sanchez means. Oh, I do. And I'm I, th not I think it, it involves poo, but it I don't does. know. Does it involve Wasn't it a poo? TV series? Yeah, it was. Wasn't it like a jackass ripoff? It was. It was, but, it was but, more hardcore than jackass. Yes. Yeah, That's it, why it wasn't funny. It well, they were Welsh, funny. weren't they? So I think it's yeah, just what Welsh people do. It was quite funny. Mm. The Welsh sorry if you're Welsh. You, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. I'm one-eighth I'm one Welsh. So I I'm can... also sorry if you're Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> one man who isn't Welsh, of course, was David Sanchez. Mm. Um, and he although... stinks of poop. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that. Um... <laughs> Oh, you're not ruling we, it out, look, though. Look, <laughs> McLaren haven't said that that's not why he was let go, but we have no evidence to suggest that that is the case. Oh, right. It, it just seemed like a weird a weird reason that they gave for him to go, because I've read that about ten times now, I still don't quite understand what it means. The role's responsibility and ambitions associated with David's position did not align with our original expectations. 
Must have been written oh, by HR, isn't it? Seems to suggest that he basically just came in and was like some kind of mad professor, and they were like, what is he doing? Have do I read that wrong? Was, do you think he was... Because it, it reads like he wasn't ambitious enough, but I reckon he was too ambitious. What The, the roles, like, responsibilities, and ambitions. He just came in and was just like, I'm going to eat Jaffa Cakes and play with a yo-yo. Can no, we, I bet he came in and went, i tell you what, paint the car green and we'll win the championship this year. And they're like, no... <laughs> Well, David. hang on. The car concept and performance, right? So, director of car concept and performance. What what is that role? So, he's not like Adrian Newey, or is he? No, I, think, I, 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 I mean, I'm very much dabbling in areas I don't really understand, but I'm going to give it a go because it's for F1's sake and that's what we do. Yes. <clears throat> I would expect with a title like that, that he was in charge of sort of the overall ethos of the car. Again, complete guess, might not be. But he's like, we're going to have a car that maximises its underfloor and everything else is sort of subservient to that or something. I don't right. know. He, he's like, right. <laughs> Maybe is, that's why he got fired. He just said stuff like that. Maybe. I, I mean, you know, if, they, they need somebody, if you need somebody new McLaren, I am available. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to base everything around the camera on the left-hand side. Um, do you and think, uh, whatever do he you... came up with, didn't they didn't like it. Right. I have a hunch that... If any of us could get into like a top job like that, I don't mean work out through the ranks or show understandings of aerodynamics. I mean, if you're just if we just got sat in that office, mm. I reckon I've got a pretty good chance of winging that job because <laughs> I feel like you. It's all it's people management, isn't it? It's about making the people underneath you. Oh, if it's people management, co- then I've got no chance. Actually, I'm really shit at that. Yeah. I, I'm I'm quite good in that people tend to like me, but I'm also not very. Do they? Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his face. <laughs> oh, I know oh, that was technically Terry, bullying, on. but that felt great for some you, under- you understand now why bullies are bullies. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. I'm taking this up as a full-time hobby. Who remember? says bully- bullying's bad? That's or brilliant. Bullying. I yeah. loved it. That's why it's great. Anyway, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Are you all Sorry. right? Sorry. No, that's fine. I'm it's sorry that you got fired. I was the only child and my dad left at a young age, so uh, you know, I was, it was, I'm easy pickings. And yeah. I've really kind of pulled myself up over the years to use my wit and charm and knowledge of Formula One to get friends. But yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry yeah, about it. It's, it's all right. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Have we covered that one? I mean. Have you got brothers and sisters, Ollie? I do. Both older. I'm the youngest. But do they love you? Mm. No. My brother was here this weekend, so that's quite nice. Yes, we get on very well. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're up to something. No, I just want to... I'm going to lean what? in. Yes, I do. I just... And they love me very much, and I love them too. What's that like? Mm, it's it's great, actually. I, I love having a uh, loving brother and sister. We have a WhatsApp group called Siblings. It's very good. That's that. I've got my daughter's an only child, and we're not having any more kids, so don't, don't give it all that. <laughs> No, this it's is really what good. it's like, Phil. This is what it's like. Oh my God, my daughter's going to grow up to be Terry Saunders. Is that what yeah. you're saying? <laughs> do you know Actually, how many? I'm all right with that. Do you Wait, know how many? Which, are we took the film star or the? Do you know? <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, but I could do a lawn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> do what? a lawn? What? Yeah, what? I don't, I don't know what that meant. But after I said it, I felt like it sounded rude. <laughs> uh, but I don't I have I realized... no idea what's going on now. What podcast is this? I'm so tired. Um... <laughs> Anyway, um, so Dirty Sanchez. Here who doesn't have kids yet. Yes. <laughs> Look, I'm tired because I've just eaten, I've just eaten a really big pizza that was too big for me, and I can feel my body shutting down oh, I, just I as I back. start recording a podcast, which I think is very much like fatherhood, isn't it? <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's actually a fairly accurate description. <laughs> <laughs> and my body looks like a pizza, so yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, with, that's McLaren. <laughs> yeah, great. With so much war in the world, wouldn't it be great to see two great enemies united? One love? Well, we might just get that because Liberty Media, owners of F1, are now also the owners of MotoGP, the F1 of motorbikes. Well, nearly, barring a few permissions needed from EU anti-monopoly investigators. Finally, our dream of seeing bikes and cars on track at the same time will be realised. That's what this means, right? Yep. Multi-class racing. What we've signed up for, genuinely, that would be amazing. If they don't at least have a few sort of demo things with cars and bikes, I'll be very annoyed. Look, I don't give a shit about MotoGP. If mm. you put it on them when the Formula 1's on, I will start to watch it. So that's who they should aim for, people like me. 
I think so. To be honest, I, I followed it for a few... I only don't watch it now because I just haven't got time. But a few seasons ago, I watched probably three or four seasons of it quite closely. It is really good. Like, and what it's I not like, as good as F1, but it is, it is mm. good. But what I like is the races are quite short, aren't they? Because they, <clears> they've got less wheels, I guess. Relatively. There's a lot of overtaking. Yeah. but There's a lot cause, of crashes. Cause they're, but they're like, they're like 30 lap races, am I right? Is that, is I can't that right? exactly. I mean, it's a, Let's lot, say, it's a lot more physical, I think. Let's say there's a 30 lap race. Mm. Right, and they do it at the same track where the Formula One has got an eighty lap race. That means on lap fifty, they get to release the bikes. So you know, just as the race is getting really boring, suddenly the bikes will come up <laughs> just for qualifying. So they're like dawdling. Yeah, yeah, nothing could go wrong. I do, think it's great. Do I think you the two idea ride... of having like a double header weekend would be great. Do you two ride motorbikes though? No. no. See, no. this is the thing. I, I see. I, I know what it's like to drive a car, not an F one car. So I kind of feel like it's a little bit more relatable. I've no idea what it's like to ride a motorbike. I've been on the back of a motorbike, and I'd, I'd, I, I can see myself getting into bikes, but I can also see myself wrapping myself around a tree within that, the first two. Yeah, weeks. that's my worry with it. I think I'd like to go yeah. fast on one, and then I'd just end up killing myself. That would that would be my problem with cars, uh, but cars have a bit more protection, which is yeah. just as well in my youth. Mm. Maybe actually, maybe I've calmed down now. Maybe I've, maybe it's time to get a motorbike. Oh, you've hit that age. Yeah, I have. I can't afford a Porsche. I can't afford a motorbike. Well, it's easier on the knees than rollerblading, so maybe you'll be fine. Uh, until it until it goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. And then, then you've got no knees. You'll have no knees left. Yeah, <laughs> just so you feel like a straight legged. Terry, can I make a request? Yeah. You're breathing quite heavily into the microphone. Yeah. And while it is quite sensual and sexy, I have to go into the edit and I have to cut out all of your heavy breathing, and it takes me ages. I'm just trying to be. I'm bullying you again, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell us how wrong we are. You can do via social media. We're at For f one Sake on Twitter slash X, Instagram, and on Facebook. And we're on TikTok too. And just 19 years after it started, we're on YouTube. Come and watch us. Comment on our videos and like and subscribe so we can be influencers. Or you can email us wrong at ff1s.com. Alternatively, if you think we're right, then why not buy us a beer at The Whinging Moustache? The Winding Moustache is a conversation symposium, a mythical place where the grand elders of Formula One past come together, so to speak. And just like how Sam Smith's pubs ban music, and it turns out us after one episode, The Winding Moustache is a place where you can hear our wizened analysis uninterrupted by capitalism. But mostly, it's an Apple subscription where you get ad-free versions of this podcast. So join us at The Winding Moustache, head to Apple Podcasts and hit the subscribe button. And there's a free seven-day trial right now. Or, if you want to just say thanks for making Sense of F1 for another year, you can donate a one-off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. Teams! Right, get down from that iconic Ferris wheel, you. It's time for a rundown of the teams at the Japanese Grand Prix. Red Bull. Remember Hornergate? It doesn't seem to be bothering Red Bull now as they're back to their winning ways with Verstappen cruising to victory in the now traditional style and Sergio Perez doing some decidedly untraditional competent driving to finish second. All this at a race that the team said they were moderately nervous about. Bodes well for the rest of the season then? Yeah. Just for a moment, just for a moment in Australia, I thought, oh, it's all getting too much and it's going to crumble. The house of cards is coming down, but no. Back to it. Dominant victory. One, two. Bosh. Done. Rest of the season. The house of cards is made of carbon fibre yes. and the way the wind the way the wind way sails through actually strengthens the bond. Yeah. Turns out that Adrian Newey likes cars, boats and houses of cards. And houses of boats as well. Um, houseboats. Houseboats and... Um, and, oh, can you imagine an Adrian Newey houseboat like a longboat that they park up in the river in London? It'd be very fast. It'd be very fast. Yeah. It'd be very big, though, as well, wouldn't it? The fastest houseboat in the world. But um, I don't... What's up to, what's up to Hornigate? It's gone yeah, it's all just well, kind of gone away, isn't it? No, there was a big article about it, because the friend of the person who made the complaint has said that... She's they, upset about it. They says he's upset about it. But also, the interesting thing was that she's had to sign an NDA where she can't talk to anyone except for like her lawyer and her friend about it or something. Whereas Christian Horner, who's also signed an NDA, is just saying, oh, it's all right, I'll just chat about it to anyone who asks. You know, or I mean, I'll just... he'll chat about anything to anyone who asks. Exactly. So I feel a bit... And this, and this woman is uh, appealing the decision and, 
and so I think we're in this. I don't think I don't think Hornigate is over. Hmm. I think probably what happened is everyone loves a bit of a power vacuum. So when he looked weak, the Red Bull machinations were moving and people were trying to get rid of him. And I guess he's safe for now. I suppose it'll just depend until the next thing happens. But by definitely, their time. yeah, definitely the. I feel that what happened is that Jos Verstappen shot his load too early. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Call fire. As we fire said, everywhere. Yeah. Imagine that's what happened at that pit stop. He was just having that's, a wank. Yeah, we had that exact joke. Yeah, we, that's exactly. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. You we see. Talked about jizzing on the brakes and yeah, we, yeah. we've been there. <laughs> Did, there's a whole Did bit, we? There's yes. a whole bit about it. Yeah. yeah. Did for, we? Yeah. For like 20 minutes. Yeah. I don't. There's a lot <laughs> of riffing on it. It was it was disgusting. Yeah, it was. It was great. me. Was it? it yeah, I was yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you led it. Yeah. yeah. No recollection. Mm. That's not. It's not a Phil or Rolly bit. Of that. That's that's a Teddy <laughs> bit. Uh, yeah. Hey, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I think Jos Verstappen <laughs> shot his load too quick. <laughs> oh, oh, so, <clears throat> imagine if he was did that pit stop. He was on fire. He was wanking. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I've said that before. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, this is a lot like the Red Bull performances. It's like, yeah, we've seen this before, one, two, blah, blah. Actually, no, we haven't. It's usually just one. It's usually one, yeah. five. But I, no, I do think that... Sorry, I'll try and do it properly this time. I do think that Jos Verstappen shot his load too early when he said that Horner should quit. And I think he spooked everybody because everyone was like, well, you're not supposed to say it out loud. And then he was like, oh, I'm going to go off and have a wank. And then caught fire. <laughs> caught fire <laughs> and a, so do you think what? he's just a bit too upfront, so to speak? Oh, with it's just like we should fire him instead of doing sort of political machinations behind the scenes. Yeah, he's supposed to be Machiavellian about it. He's supposed to be there going, "Oh, okay, well, what are my friend's friends is my enemies. My enemy's friend is my friend's friend, and all this kind of stuff." And he just went, "I don't like you." <laughs> <laughs> that is how he sounds, but with yeah. a Dutch accent. I don't like you. No Dutch accent. <laughs> I don't like you. That's better. <laughs> I don't like. Oh no! I still <laughs> like you. <laughs> oh, if he's got orange, am I, am I dying? Or is McLaren winning? I've gone very well. <laughs> so, I went through every single European country within the space of a sentence. Did it? It was like it was like an interrailing accent. It's like an interrailing accident. That's what it was. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Scottish, yeah. <laughs> I could do it more. I could do it more. We don't want to talk about the teams. Go on. We've said we do. We've we the team. in the room. What's going on? Yes, yeah, take us for we... a trip round Europe. We'll Look, start we... in. Uh, <laughs> we'll start in Essex. We're on the train. We're going to go on the Eurostar. Look, we promised producer Matt we'd do all the teams in twenty minutes. <laughs> Thanks to my repeated Yossi stuff and wanking joke, and then my accents, we've done five minutes on Red Bull, and we haven't even talked about Red Bull. <laughs> no. They're well, doing very well. They'll continue to do very well unless something weird happens, which it doesn't look like it's going to until something else happens in the Hornigate thing. Next. Well, no, can we just talk about Perez briefly? He did quite uh, fine, well, didn't right. he? Oh. I mean, f- yeah, for Perez. Actually, in fairness, yeah, for Perez. Yeah. I mean, he was, what, 15, 10, 15 seconds off the back of Verstappen? Oh, yeah, but it's better but than, like, did qualify well. <laughs> he did qualify, like... Uh, Actually, he was very like, close to him in qualifying. But as as people keep saying, like, any old F1 driver can do one quick lap. I mean, they don't always, but they can. No, but they don't. That's that, that's that's not what they say because most most drivers are. Oh, I'm not very good on a Saturday, but on the Sunday I'm better. So yeah, well, yeah, but I think like some surprising drivers have had pole positions in the past. Both Name the Hulkenberg, Hulkenberg, Hulkenberg Magnussen. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm. yeah. Hamilton. Uh, not that surprising. <laughs> Was the first. It'd time. be surprising now, but. Ooh. Ferrari. Ferrari continues not to Ferrari it up, other than by ditching what increasingly appears to be their best driver. Carlos Sainz nailed another podium in a car that's not as fast as the Red Bull, but a good chunk ahead of all the others. Charles Leclerc fumbled in qualifying and chose the wrong strategy. Yeah. I had a fumble in qualifying too. (laughs) Sorry, you chose the wrong strategy too. Um, Um, So... Mm. I think I suddenly have a bit of respect for Carlos Sainz, not because he's a good driver or because I find him likeable in any way, but because he, like me, only works well against the deadline. And now he's been fired. Yeah. 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 Now he's been fired. Suddenly, where's all this performance come from? Before, he was like, you know, as long as at the end of the year I'm doing better. Now he's got fired. He's just like, fuck, 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 fuck. He's absolutely smashing it. Yeah, that's what I'm like. Yeah. No, I, I'm very similar, to be honest. I, I hate being under pressure, but I do my best work under pressure. 
which I is have that, very so annoying. I, I'm doing so I'm doing a th- I'm doing a show at the end of the week and I've had months to prepare for it and I've just been sat just sat staring in space for like a month going I should probably start that yeah and today I woke up with the utter s- surety that I don't have enough time to do all the things I need to do and I feel great because yeah. I'm like right crack just knuckles banged out a Netflix go. special in life life yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well it is it's a kick up the ass we had this chat the other week didn't we it was the kick up the ass that he needed quite clearly and it's worth and then Jos Verstappen set on fire <laughs> <laughs> having a wank. I think I'd remember. <laughs> uh, what about what about Charles? Well, Charles. He actually because Charles. It, as it turned out he was on the wrong strategy. He did a one stop, mm. which as it turned That's out a was shop, the wrong it? strategy. <clears throat> it, yes, exactly. <laughs> he went to one stop, and that was not what you want to do. Um, I tell you where they do good one, uh, good strategies. Spa, mm. Dylan's. Mm. Yeah, because that's also Dylan's a Spa, S P A R, and Spa yeah, yeah, Francorchamps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, yeah, remember, yeah, do you know budgies? Do you remember budgies? Yeah, yeah, they're still around. Oh, they're still, yeah, that's are. where I got all my budgies. <laughs> like budgies. And, and your shorts? No, that doesn't work. Happy Shopper. Do you remember Happy Shopper? Yes, with the little face. Yeah, that's what a was... crazy brand? When you look back, that's a crazy brand, wasn't it? Because that was only in newsagents, and yeah. yet it was also like a nationwide brand. What was that all about? Yeah, weird. Oh, it was the eighties. It was random. Random. Speaking of random, Charles Leclerc. Uh, mm. Hashtag segue. Uh, actually drove really well mm. on Sunday, but was on a strategy that was never going to work. So it, it was sort of like you're doing it all wrong, but you're doing it all wrong in a very competent way, mm. if that makes sense. Uh, but he didn't have a good qualifying. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a good qualifying, so that immediately put him at a disadvantage. And he probably could have done better if he wasn't. I, he, he probably was as good, if not maybe even slightly better than Science, but Science has got the quarter. I don't know who chose the strategy, whether it was... No, 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 because Science finished ahead of him. Yeah, yeah, exactly, But because he had the right strategy. But in terms of actually execute, if, if you leave aside the fact that Leclerc had the wrong strategy, he executed it superbly. Yeah, but Science yeah. was ahead of it. This, I know this yeah. is getting a bit like, but this one goes to 11. <laughs> That's exactly what this is going What to you're be. talking about is like, yeah, he, he, he managed his tyres very well, didn't he? He, he was on his tyres. He flawlessly executed a, flaw, a flawed plan. Yes, okay. So who gave him the flaw? <laughs> who's, whose job is it to take the plan? Because if he chose that plan, well, this is it's it. his fault. I don't know how that works. I assume <laughs> that they all just have a talk about it in Italian with a lot of hand gestures, and it's a team decision. Let's pull but it out. Of if hat. it goes wrong, presumably one team member has been fired. Mm. Maybe. And it's Carlos Sainz, apparently. It, he still came fourth. Like we should probably yeah. say that. Which yeah. actually, you know, is still pretty good. Bearing in mind nobody's fast enough for the Red Bulls, and if if Perez is driving well, then that's you know third or fourth is as good as you're going to get. <coughs> so he should probably be moderately happy. But he's it, he did say some interesting stuff. In that he's this is several races now where he's not been great in qualifying, which is weird because historically he's been really good in qualifying. Like he's one, he was one of the best qualifiers, and now he seems not to be. Mm. So what's going on there? Tires, tires. He's, he's nervous. He's nervous because Hamilton, forgetting. Hamilton's coming along. Look, I, I just think that Charlie Clerk is fucked next year. I just don't think he can handle pressure. Like unlike Carlos Sainz, Phil, and myself. Charlie Clerk cannot work under pressure. He needs everything to be super nice, and everyone's like, oh, Charles, you're the best. Oh, my God, you look good today. Whereas me, Lewis, Phil, you know, we just go, whoa, we yeah. got, we've, we've been sitting on our ass for ages. It's time to um, cook some bread. What do they say? Cook some bread. <laughs> make, some, make some noise. It's bread time. Need Smash some the dough. pitter. What? I don't know what the saying is. I don't know what we're saying either. But yeah, I mean, generally speaking, let's... For all our nitpickery, which is kind of what we do, Ferrari are doing well this season. That's four. How many races are we in now? Four, five, six? Four. Oh, God, four. is it four? Yeah, four. Ah, <sighs> seems like more. But, yeah, four races in, they, have, they haven't they have dropped the ball at all. Like, Red, Red Bull are the fastest. They're not mm, going to beat yeah. them unless something goes wrong. And when they do, they were there to win, and they've been knocking out podiums. And we're in the weird position where their number one driver is being beaten by their number two driver, but I, I guess that's fine. They're doing quite well. Mm. How yeah. long will it carry on? Are we? Are we suddenly? Is it going to be like Skoda jokes, where suddenly they they don't really work anymore because Skoda are good now and have been for a while? Are we going to are we going to run out of Ferrariing it up jokes because they don't work? I have faith, Phil. Have faith. Okay. <laughs> McLaren. I believe Norris over delivered in qualifying and Piastri under delivered in the race. McLaren say they are still a year away from fixing all their issues, but who can really say that? 
No, I think this time next year I'm going to be less of a prick. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a prick. No, no but I'm, I can be less of a prick. Oh, we all can. I, well, yeah, you can. I could. Yeah. yeah. That... <sighs> but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is another one, right? Like, again, they're the third best team, which mm. is all right, but they should be the second best team. Should they, so they really? Should be, We've yeah, just because at the end of last year, they were the second best team by a, and by a, a you know a, a chunk from everybody else. Well, if we go, if we're going on that. They should be the first best team because <laughs> well, yes. they were my favourite when I was growing up. Oh yeah, and mm. they, have you told them this? Have you reminded them? I should write. I should write them an email, shouldn't I? Yeah. Sign it from Ron Dennis. No, I do it in Chrome. I do it in Chrome because they're like they're sponsored I'll by Chrome. Do it in crayon. <laughs> <laughs> Dear yeah, yeah, Chrome. Mr. McLaren, <laughs> print it off on orange paper. Yeah. And send it to them. Carve it post. into an actual papaya. Yes. Carve it into a tyre. Carve we, it drove, into I some carbon the, fibre. Uh, I drove past the McLaren Technology Centre the other day. It's still there. How is it? Well, you can't really see much of it from the road. But I actually, as I went there last year, I, had, I think I talked about it on the podcast. Yeah, I, I think they should make it more orange, because my memory it's not of orange it is at all. It's very grey. No, it's, it's all very west-looking. I would say, having having oh. been there a couple of times, it, it it's got a kind of West vibe going on. You remember the You're West right. livery from the late nineties, early two thousand? Because that's about when it was built, I'd imagine. So yeah, they well, were like, oh, was we'll around then, and it, it very much looks this, like that. It, I'm going to keep this West livery forever. You go there, and it's very clean, and it's very shiny, and it makes me want to smoke. <laughs> Did you smoke the, when I was there? No, it was just, it, you know, it made you I should have done. I felt like I, I felt like I had to. I, it annoys me that they don't continue to sell all their old sponsors' products. That should be a rule, like in F1. If you are ever sponsored by anyone, you have to continuously stock their products in your team shop. What if it was a loophole? And because you know that Rishi Sunak is talking about uh, banning smoking in general. About I can't remember. I haven't, I've seen that headline. But imagine if there's a loophole that the only place you could get cigarettes from was the McLaren factory. <laughs> So you get like, you know, when you see people outside hospitals, they're in a wheelchair, but they're they're having a puff on a cigarette, and they'll just be all like queuing up outside the McLaren Technology Centre. Being, hello, I would like twenty <laughs> twenty miles, please. I was going to say they're not, they'll be they'll be up at Grove getting their Rothmans and their Camels. They'll, they'll be and Edges and from Aston Martin. Yeah, some mild seven from the, from uh, Renault or whatever they are now. Are they still Renault? Oh. No, Alpine. That's what they are now. Yeah. Oh. Those anyway, were the days. Let's make that happen. <laughs> I miss smoking. I don't miss smoking. Horrible stuff. Aston Martin. Fernando Alonso had the race of his life again, according to him, but this is not so much because he actually had the race of his life, but more that he is advertising himself to other teams and hoping no one notices. That's exactly what he's doing. Although he has been doing this for years. Mm. But he said this was in his top five of races, yes. and he finished sixth. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> Come on, mate. You you might look. No one believes your stick anymore, right? Yes, you're a good racer. Yes, you're you know you're you're still putting your heart into it, even though you're old. But no one's gonna. If you really think that's the one of the five best races you ever did, then it's time to fucking retire, mate. Because that was I didn't even know you were in it. You shit. <laughs> Whereas what he's actually doing is he's trying to get Red Bull to sign him, and that's never going to happen. Oh, yeah, he seems to have moved away from his Mercedes uh, loving that he was on a few races ago now, and now he's realised they're not very good. Well, what's happening is that Alonso's gone... Red Bull. Yeah, Alonso's gone back to his megalomania, where basically everyone's talking about him, so it's gone to his head, and I think that's what always happens. It just goes to his head. So now, because there was a bit of talk of maybe Mercedes wanting him, and he's gone, well, Mercedes are as quick as I am this year, so therefore they'll never be quick again, so therefore, fuck you! Mercedes, I would never drive for you, you scum. Okay. And then next year, Mercedes will be quick, and he's like, "Oh, maybe I should drive for Mercedes." And it's like, <laughs> "No, because you you've done it again. Just calm down, back off, just back off a level, Alonso. Just wait, don't say anything." <laughs> I give it two races until he starts talking about himself in the third person. <laughs> that would be amazing. And oh. starts pretending that things have happened that we all know haven't, and just starts <laughs> losing himself. And that like, comes out as if he's just had a fight with somebody. It's just like, yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alonso oh, just had a fight. Me back. <laughs> Alonso will end you. <laughs> that Alonso is a prick. What I'm not getting this right. No. <laughs> Uh, the most inter- interesting thing Stroll did was uh, some radio message, wasn't it? That was about it. Oh, he yeah, said something I, on the radio. I only heard it once, and I can't remember what he said. He had a bit of a whinge, didn't he? He was he went something really high about pitched. the speed of the car, and he went very high-pitched. And it's really was fast! I, or no, it's not fast enough, one of the two. He was just having a complete whinge, yeah. That was the most interesting thing he did. He came to I it. mean, uh, finally. Finally, he's showing his true car. I have more respect for him if he'd actually 
start properly whinging because we all know he's not happy. Mm. The Mercedes is a right twat to set up and seems to keep forgetting settings like Terry's iPhone. Mm. What was fast? <laughs> Sorry, that? I don't know why that's so funny because I just know how true it is. L- little in joke here for the. the uh, we'll let, uh, let you into behind the scenes workings. <laughs> so at the last podcast, producer Matt made me go into my settings and like <laughs> reset all warnings, and I was like, oh, "That seems innocuous." And in the last two weeks, my phone has been a source of utter hatred <laughs> in my life because every time I pick it up, you think, "Oh, you probably because you kind of think, oh, I must go to all the apps I use within a day or two. And two weeks on, I'm opening an app and it's like, oh, can we use your network? Oh, can we have Bluetooth? Oh, can I have some photos, please? Oh, what's your location? Where are you? Are you listening to me? Can I use your microphone? Can I use your camera? Oh, 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 please. Please love me. Please love me. And it's just... We should point out that this is because you use your phone as a camera, not because Mal was just fucking with Just fucking with your phone, yeah. Well, I don't know anymore. <laughs> It could have been, couldn't it? My laptop has a camera on it, and somehow that's not good enough, so I have to start fucking around with my phone settings. Well, anyway. And, and I've got... My, but he's, put my, he's put my credit card on his Apple account. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you just really liked Candy Crush. Well, as I was saying, the Mercedes is a right twat to set up. Uh, what was fast on Friday is shit on Sunday. Lewis tried a mighty one-stop strategy uh, that could have been glorious but wasn't, and Russell got annoyed behind Alonso again. Yeah, although d- didn't get uh, didn't get sort of speared into a wall by Alonso's uh, naughty braking this week, so that's mm. good. That was mm. actually... We didn't really talk about that. That was quite masterful from Alonso, <laughs> for all us mocking him for being himself up. His, his lurking... Uh, like keeping Piastri between him and Russell and just keeping Piastri in his DRS thing so that Russell couldn't get past him was very good. Didn't Sainz do that last year, was it? But do you know what? Lurking. Lurking is the best word for Alonso. That's someone who (laughs) lurks. He's a lurker, isn't he? He is a bit. He's a very talented lurker. He's very good at it. He's very good at racing. I don't think he's very good at anything else. Well, lurking. Lurking? I don't... Lurking and racing. can you be good at lurking? Because I think by lurking, you're therefore not good at lurking. Because if you're noticed, if someone notices you lurking, are you lurking anymore? I was trying to think about how how you would go about this. The idea that you can drive a Formula One car at, 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 at considerable pace around the track while keeping an eye on the two cars behind you and making sure that you're just backing off enough that you don't get away from the car. Because he knew he wasn't going to catch whoever it was in front of him. Leclerc. Was it Leclerc? Whoever it was. Um... Piastri, Norris, Norris. Doesn't matter. He's gonna, yes. Yeah. Um, it's Terry, he, he doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't. I've not, not got the hang of this podcast. You're not first, you're last. Um, to be able to keep Piastri just within reach so that Piastri had DRS, which meant that Russell couldn't get past him because he knew that if Russell got past Piastri, he would then get past Alonso as well. Mm. And it, so by driving slower, he was keeping he was keeping his place. But to be able to do that, but to be able to concentrate on a end race and be able to do that to the level where you can let him get close but not close enough is yeah. But he's quite old. Really and difficult. If, you, if you've ever driven on a Sunday behind someone uh, who's old, they're also very good at that and not letting you get. They past, are, but they're but not doing very, it on purpose. No, but I think they are. They're... They definitely are doing it on purpose <laughs> because they they manage to do it. Reg- it, it doesn't matter. They they have they you follow just been me. Driving but... around Spain and there's this guy in a. They just they, they <laughs> follow you. They follow you, but from in front, they mm. somehow know where you're going. That's Alonso. I do know what you mean. He is, he is very good at it. It was, it was, everyone was having a go at Magnussen to race two races ago when he, was, when he was making his car wide. This was, this was like another level of driving slowly to your advantage. I, th- mm. I thought it was, I thought it was very good. Well done, Fernando. And the also rans RB. Sorry, I've just realised we didn't talk about Mercedes at all in that section. Oh no, we didn't. I skipped it. Oh sorry. no. Oh, yeah, I, I, uh, let me. tries to do a one stop. It didn't work. Russell just was annoying. End of. Don't care. <laughs> That'll do, wouldn't it? All right. Did, have you got anything else to add, Phil? Not really, no. I mean, what we do know about Mercedes is they, they're they fucked it again. Like This is the race now where they're just like, oh, God, there's no magic. Focus fix. on next we've, year's car. We've built another shit car, lads. And this was the car that was going to make us make Hamilton feel bad for leaving so early. And actually, all it's done is vindicated his decision. The bust. It has. Mm. It's another masterstroke from Hamilton at, at, decide, at realizing when the car's going to go crap and, and jump to a better team. And uh, Ferrari on the up. And, uh, oh. Who would have seen that coming? Nobody. We all mocked him. They all laughed at Christopher Columbus, as they say. Um, yeah, no, they're, they're bollocks now, aren't they? 
Uh, yeah, barely noticed them, to be honest. And the also rans, RB, to the tune of Spider Man. Do I have to? Yes. Uh, how does it go again? Spider Man. Danny Rick, Danny Rick. Everyone thinks that you're a prick. It's a bit harsh, Ollie. Punt- <laughs> punted off on the Good first on. lap after being out qualified. Unlike Crowded House, is it time to dream it's over? No, Crowded House don't dream it's over. No, that's why I said unlike Crowded House. Oh, I see. Right, right, right. right, right it's right, a double right, negative. Right, right, yes. right. right. Yes. I, for one, am a big fan of more Crowded House references in this podcast. Okay. Noted. Ha. Ha. Hulk did good in quali, but a terrible start mucked up his race, and Kevin Magnussen had a long, lonely race. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 11th and 13th, they're almost to the points. It's all but right. they're not. Well, I thought they were going to be last every race at the start of the season, but they're, they're not. not, so fine. Well done. Sauber, no fucking Uber ads this week, so fuck them. Did they have another shit pit stop? Don't care. Um, we Everyone <laughs> talked about Bonas too much last time, so let's f- fuck off. One of the cars broke, so that's good. Don't. don't. Yeah. Alpine Alpine really did their best which unfortunately was utter shit <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah yeah terrible uh, Williams Alex Albon smashed his car up on the opening corner and so now that means that Daniel Ricciardo has to hand over his chassis for the next race <laughs> I feel a little bit bad for Williams like apparently it's cost them like two million dollars <gasps> in crashes in the last couple of races. Ooh, like they've used great. almost their whole season's contingency money for crashes in the first four races. This is actually, this is genuinely fascinating, I think, because the budget cap we hear about <clears throat> all the time and we're just like, oh, it's, it's, it's like a nebulous thing we can't get our head around. But now we're actually finding out that Williams can't afford to keep crashing because, because yeah, they had to send the car back to Britain and then get it all fixed, and then send it back out to Australia, and then send another car back. You know, just, you know, we've all tried to send a parcel. Imagine trying to send a fucking Formula One car across the world and, and, last and minute. And a broken Formula One car. I presume they're just, like, cramming all the bits into a box and just wrapping it in cavity. tape. <laughs> or you reckon when it gets to the Williams factory, it's like they get a box, and the delivery guy says, yeah, this is one of 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, what, this car's in pieces? No, it was like that when I got it. <laughs> and now it's time for the State of F1 with Terry Saunders. <laughs> Okay, hey everyone, uh, thanks for coming. Yeah, 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 he'll be here in a minute. Okay, so the plan is, we'll act normal, and then when he's settled, I'll start. Okay? What? He's here already? Christ, I'm nervous. All right. Oh, hey, hey, I've got to do an, got to do an accent, I forgot, I didn't realise. Oh, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, why doesn't anyone have any shoes on? Where are all, where are all the shoes? Oh, hi, Daniel, hi. Um, you don't know me, I don't think. I do a podcast, FF1S. No, not that one. No, not that one either. No, seriously, you've, you've never heard of me. Okay, no, sorry, sorry, everyone, I'll get on with it. Uh, Daniel, this was, I was in a Bond film, too. You know, right? Okay, anyway, sorry. Anyway, anyway, Daniel, hi, Daniel Ricardo. I'm Terry. This is an intervention. Uh, we thought it was a good time to sit and talk about what's been going on. No, no, all the shoes are locked away. This is for your own good. Uh, Right. Not to kick shame, but Daniel Ricciardo's humiliation fetish has gone far enough. On a weekend where he was roundly beaten by his teammate at his home race, after last week being roundly beaten by his teammate at his home race, the person whose job he is vying for qualified spitting distance behind Verstappen and finished a very respectable first not max place. And then he spanks it into the wall on the first corner, and it wasn't even his fault. When he was winning races for Red Bull, leaving to go and start a dream at Renault, who at that time had begun a campaign to be championship contending outfit within a hundred races, he looked all set to be going into the grand second act of his career. And now, being forced to beg Red Bull to allow him the possibility of begging to lick the victorious drops from Verstappen's winning streak shoes, it seems that the end of the road for the plucky Aussie is in sight. But don't worry, I have a solution. Look at yourself. The cheeky smile the Aussie persona doesn't sit so well when you're crying. <laughs> It's all right. You did a lot. You won races, and ultimately, you weren't as good as one of the best drivers ever. Also, admittedly, you weren't as good as Norris, or Tsunoda either. And actually, you're not even as good as you used to be. But it's sad now. I'm really sorry that the dream comeback isn't working, but face it, it's over. 
Go and do Le Mans or be in a Will Ferrell film or even just be homeless for a bit, hanging out outside swanky restaurants full of F1 drivers in Monaco, watching the succulent food eaten by everyone with glamorous partners as the sight of the food makes you salivate and you start just openly playing with yourself against the plate glass window and Helmut Marco sees you and says, is that Daddy Rick? And everyone points and laughs, except for Max Verstappen, who doesn't join in with the cruelty and you think maybe he is a good guy after all. But then when everything dies down, he just says, who? And everyone laughs until you leave. That would be less degrading than what you're doing right now. <laughs> oh. See, bullying is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to take issue with one thing you said in that. Just the one. Um, Go on. the, the crash uh, in Japan, that was his fault. <laughs> Oh, even better. Even fucking better. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't know Fuck how he didn't get a prick. penalty for it. They probably just felt sorry for him. That's it from us. We'll be back even before there's more racing with another of Phil Troman's race previews. And we'll be answering your questions in Listener's Corner. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Troman's. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about. Speaking of that, Danny Ricardo, he's getting a new chassis for China just to, just to make doubly sure that it's not the car. And to Terry Saunders. We haven't had time to talk about William Byron, who took the win at Martinsville on the Hendrick 40th anniversary of the NASCAR Cup. How did we miss that? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got time, Phil. <laughs> In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for f one sake, and follow us on Twitter at for f one sake. Oh, and check out our YouTube channel, where you can see, as well as hear us... Ooh. If you're watching on YouTube already, you would have just seen the thing that happened on my screen. Here's something else just for you. Like and subscribe. However, uh, you want to, if you want to watch... Oh, fuck me. Watch fuck, I'm sorry, I'm messing up the intonation. However, Free you intonation's your last of your worries, mate. <laughs> oh, don't. You're right. Bullying's fun. It hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. It really hurts when someone says something that just gets a little bit of truth. And you're just there going, I don't think they meant it, but does he really hate me? Because that's what I felt earlier. Uh, nah, you love me. However you want to... No, I like you. I just think, I th- I'm scared you hate me. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I'll let you live with that niggling doubt. Uh, <laughs> however you want to watch or listen just type in for f one sake to something and see what comes up Terry where can people buy merch right Ollie see how it's done you can do merch at <laughs> f1s you can do merch you can't do merch shit well you can do it if you want as long as you pay for it I don't care what you do to it. <laughs> but no returns it's not if it's soiled <laughs> he fucked it he had one job and he fucked it yeah and that job was team principal of Red Bull Racing ff1s.com forward slash shop 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 thanks for listening I've been Drew Stern fuck <laughs> goodbye <laughs>